Okay, then I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, and uh, uh, the roll call. Um, I uh, Before we start the roll call, though, I just wanted to welcome Laura as our new member. Thank you. It's uh, a pleasure to be care. here. Uh, hi, Laura. This is Robin Fordham. I have in one of my emails that your first name is spelled with an apostrophe. Is that correct? Yes, it is. So it's L apostrophe A-U-R-A? -A? That's correct. Okay, great. Got it. Thank you. Um, okay. So uh, present is, uh, uh, is myself, Lynn Kelly. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, Lindsay Rowe, Virginia DeSauger. Here? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Here. Here. Doug Mayo. Here. And uh, Laura Jordan. And uh, our uh, uh, guest is uh, Bob Williford. And Robin Fordham is our Administrative Assistant Extraordinaire. And that'll do it. Um, first on the agenda is approval of the minutes from July 10th. Um, it looked good to me. Was there anyone who had any questions about it? I make a motion to, to avoid. accept. Oh, sorry. I just wanted to clarify that I put the 10th, I think, in the agenda. They're actually the minutes of the 9th, but that's correct on the draft. Yeah. I second. Um, so we'll accept the minutes. So moved. Um, Margo usually does the treasurer's report. I thought she was coming today. Um, I'm going to assume that um, things are the same from month to month. I'm just shutting off my printer. Sorry about that. Ugh. Sorry. <laughs> this is the problem with being at home, huh? Okay. Um, so we'll defer the treasurer's report till next month. So under open issues, um, I left one thing off the agenda and I thought I'll just put it on right now. Um, and that's about Arch Street. I noticed that they're beginning to put the sidewalks in. Uh, I wondered if Doug might have some more information about that or if he's been down. Uh, well, I mean, I, I uh, aside from breaking my leg uh, last week, uh, even with breaking my leg last week, I dragged myself out uh, to, the si to, to the sidewalk, to the corner of Arch Street and uh, Wells Street and took pictures of them unearthing the, the sidewalk um, and have taken several pictures of them since then. Uh, they've gotten further down. Uh, I think they've gone underneath the arch. Oh. But I, I can't say for sure because they blocked off, you know, uh, Arch Street and I haven't been that far. I haven't felt that well enough to, to walk all the way down to, to Chapman Street. Um, to, um, uh, to to get that side of it, but I do know that they uh, have gotten that far. It looks it looks great, and they've gotten all the appropriate uh, um, devices. And uh, I don't know what they call those plates, those yellow plates um, that they put in into the sidewalk for uh, wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. um, they have got them going uh, uh, in both directions. Um, and, uh, uh, that's, um, and they've, they've been pretty much been there, um, uh, 
uh, night and day, um, uh, or or every day, I should say, uh, in doing fine work. Um, Lindsay, do you know any more about it in terms of the section under the arch? I don't know any more about it in terms of under the arch, sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, but I was excited to see that work had started and uh, I know it's really important for folks uh, as a, uh, a connecting street. Good, all right. Yeah, it looks good from what I saw. Um, so the next uh, item on the agenda is um, status of invitation to department heads and um, I really have been appreciating having uh, Marlo and then uh, Mark Snow so um, and Valerie Bird so I wondered if it was appropriate to have Danny Letourneau from communications um, hmm. Um, you know, she seemed to be, uh, I mean, one of the issues we talked about at the last meeting was uh, doing better communicating with the community. So um, I just thought perhaps she was another person. Um, I think that's a great idea. Because uh, okay. I don't, it, I it, don't ties, know. it ties right in with your uh, with your 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 thought you just uh, said is uh, tie, uh, better communication and because she's the tie-in with the mayor uh, it gives us an uh, it can't hurt to to invite her if she mm -hmm. says no or or um, uh, that she's not uh, or that she's busy that day um, it can't hurt to ask her okay so that's my view okay. Uh, some of the other department heads I was thinking of was um, Hope from uh, uh, the Senior Center. Um, she's pretty savvy and up on a lot of uh, disability issues, but it's always good to, um, you know, have an update. Um, also, the person from housing, and I thought about Jordana from uh, from. Uh, Superintendents of schools. So, um, any other folks that any other department heads, Lindsay, that you can think of? I, I'm sorry, I think, Virginia. Uh, Jenny is has a has a question. Jenny, who would Jenny? be the housing person? Pardon me. Who would be the housing person? I don't know. Uh, I, th I think those are all very good ideas. I was just wondering who. who I agree. Was, I agree. That's a wonderful idea. I, I agree with all of them. I'm just, just trying to think of who who the housing. The, the last person, the last person I think that uh, might include an invite or it would be nice to um, is uh, 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 the director Warner, uh, because he might or uh, he might be able to provide us um, a list of other streets that are uh, problematic that they plan on doing or 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 hope to do that are on our to do list as well. Um, and uh, just. It just makes sense for me, to, you know, because he he's directing his personnel to do the work uh, in house, and uh, it might behoove us to see if uh, uh, how busy his staff is to to see if there's any other areas that uh, us as a group uh, can think of that uh, that need some work. 
and I, I can think of at least a, a couple of streets um, between the old senior center and the John Zahn Center uh, would be inappropriate uh, for people or for seniors who might want to chance, uh, who are able to, uh, if they have uh, adaptable equipment and they uh, and the weather is fine, they if they um, would like to venture uh, a, a, a small trip from the old center on on High Street uh, to go uh, uh, two streets, and that's just down down Church or uh, is it Church Street? Um, yeah. I believe um, it's true. Church Street to Pleasant Street uh, to the new uh, one. And that uh, when they were, uh, uh, as soon as that John Zahn Center was uh, built, and as soon as I became a, a city councilor, I did a little walk um, from, you know, the, the old center to the, to the new center. And there are some problem areas that would, uh, especially for wheelchairs, that are uh, on on that sidewalk area. Um, so um, I would like to bring it to attention. I, I think I did bring to attention, but not as high pressure as Arch Street and Wells Street were mm -hmm. uh, at the time. But mm -hmm. I do think that um, those two uh, those two streets. Um, especially Church Street um, are, are problematic for, uh, uh, especially in and around where the um, uh, the, the uh, uh, Elm or the uh, um, whatever, whatever that uh, fraternity is on the corner, the Elks. Mm -hmm. they, they have a couple of problem area sidewalks. Um, and also, you know, with that, the old, um, um, uh, Ma Bell place that's right down the street there, um, there, there's a couple of sidewalks there that need some work, um, you know, not as, certainly not as bad as World Street or Arch Street, but still problematic enough to, uh, to be problems for people with walkers and for uh, wheelchairs um yeah i all those streets sound familiar i think we made a list from the uh street transition plan that had priorities um and i know that i remember putting church street on that but it would probably be worth I'll, I'll go back and look and revisit because um, I think I, I gave Marlo a, a list, you know, every season where we want to work on them. And I'm pretty sure that Church Street and those areas were definitely on it. And I know exactly where you're talking about across from the coffee roasters and the Elks. Yeah, those sidewalks and the curb cuts are pretty uh, deteriorated. Um, so I will take a look at, at the list that I provided. Go ahead, Lindsay. I don't know I'm having such trouble unmuting myself today. Um, additional department heads that I might think of would include um, George Vandalinder, although I believe now his department is part of um, DPW, he's head of central maintenance, and they're the ones who maintain all the town buildings. Um, so that might be um, someone who might be worth speaking to. And then the other person, um, as the library seems to be a hot topic, um, would of course be Ellen. Um, over at the library. Of course. So Duh. that would be, those would be my two. I'm trying to look at my list of uh, department heads, and uh, I think. Those would be two I think you might be interested in. Okay. Good. I just felt that having the few people that we've had already has been really helpful. So, um, okay. 
So, uh, Doug, I'll I'll look at that list that I came up with for for Marlo Warner, and uh, see if Church Street and and those places are on it for this year. Again, I think we better move pretty fast because the budget's not all that great. Uh, uh, it sure. won't it won't be all that great for a while. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, so you know the uh, block grants. Uh, are going to be harder to come by and and uh, and used quite quickly. So I think, you mm -hmm. know, having Marlowe's ear might uh, uh, would be very helpful for the group uh, to have. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, you know, if if we could uh, have him and you know give him some cake and coffee or whatever we need to do. <laughs> um, um, I like cake. <laughs> I'll put you, people always works so I'll put you down I'll, I'll even offer to make the cake <laughs> I'm pretty good at, at baking so I'll, I'll make the cake if, if we get him all right well we'll, we'll ch I'll check with him uh, we may also possibly uh, use those um, maybe for the um, ADA grant, if Marlo doesn't have them on his list, uh, it might be something we could could look into. So I'll look at yeah, that. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, so next on the agenda is just quickly the municipal ADA grant I, uh, is now open to apply for. Um, I sent the information to MJ and Lindsay and um, at one of the meetings I went to, one of their suggestions was rather than asking for a big chunk of money, um, pick a few small projects and that that seems to be more effective at getting the funds. So, um, and Lindsay and I spoke about that before the meeting and MJ is aware of that. Um, and anybody who's interested, I you know, I can send you the link for the for the ADA grant and what it looks like. Um, um, I would like that link, please. Sure. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, next on the agenda is um, the FRTA and the Elm Street bus stop and the FRTA survey. Um, I know that I sent um, the information to Laura and asked her to uh, just let any folks know at Elm Street about the survey. <laughs> um, and all of us, if we can fill out the survey for the FRTA would be extremely valuable. Any feedback they get is important. Um, I would like to add something to that when you sure. are finished. Yep. Go ahead, Laura. Um, I did I did do the survey. I did fill it out. And I don't know if other people have looked at it. It's, um, I don't know how, how it was designed, but it seemed to me very much focused on what they are doing already it was unclear to me who they were uh, marketing to. Mm -hmm. it, it, it seemed to me that there was a, a suggestion or a, 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 that they were marketing to people with uh, transportation options aside from buses. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and so I, I don't know what that was about. And I, and um, so there were no, there was no um, real space on the survey to offer anything but yes or no questions to things like, um, do you want to travel faster or do you want to travel farther? Mm -hmm. um, so the, the kinds of questions that were asked I didn't think we're looking for information about what riders' needs might be. I, hmm. I, it seemed to me 
Well, anyway, I, it seemed to me that the, the survey question sort of missed the mark for the um, residents and the sort of people who I have seen most likely to be riding the bus. Mm. Um, uh, however, I was heartened to look, to uh, do a little bit more research and find that their comment line is not simply the survey. It's that they that it is open for people to literally just leave a message about what they want to have happen. And um, when when I learned that, it occurred to me that. Um, that might be the kind of thing that people at Elm Terrace would be more likely to be willing to respond to. Mm -hmm. The survey itself was rather tiresome and didn't, like I said, it didn't feel like very germane to the, the kinds of lifestyle that um, I see around here at Elm yeah. Terrace. So, uh, but I do think that there's potential for um, for the, the comment line, and so I have. Um, I ha have been talking to people and urging them to check it out, to to think about what they might want to say, and mm -hmm. call it the comment line. Mm -hmm. um, I also would really wonder, because I suspect that they do this yearly or every other year or whatever, I really wonder how much they even use this mm. kind of information. It was not designed in-house by FRTA. It was designed by a, some sort of canned survey company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, kind of a third. So, uh, yeah, um, and, and th that's, so that's all I have to say about the survey right now. Okay. All right. Um, thank you. Ginny, has there been any other information available about the issue around the bus stop? Um, I just, I spoke to Roxanne before she was on vacation and that and one other item were on the top. I just made her aware of those again and she said that <clears throat> they were a priority. She was going to look into that. And I know that she came back yesterday, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know anything further, but um, okay. on that. I, I, I could comment also on the practical situation right now with the pandemic. Nobody is riding the bus if they can help it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And FRTA has discontinued one of the routes that usually stops here anyway. Hmm. Because of lack of ridership or do you know why? I, 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 I it was uh, a part of their COVID-19 response mm -hmm. plan. Mm -hmm. um, so that I, I don't know. Um, we there has been a bus, and I can't remember which route it is. It's either 20 or 21 um, that would go from Elm Terrace to Valley Medical. Nor it would head northward from Elm Terrace to Valley Medical, um, and then uh, make a big loop around town. And um, that they've discontinued that one. So now, if one wanted, if I wanted to go to Valley Medical which is about three quarters of a mile from where I live, sure. I would have to r ride out to Munson Street and the fairground and um, go to the bus depot and then catch another bus and then head up to Stop and Shop, uh, not Stop and Shop, um, Cherry Run Plaza, and then go up to Leiden Woods and then come back and get to Valley Medical Center. Wow. Wow. So um, it, it, anyway, I don't believe that FRTA has got any really good options for us right now. And nobody's riding the bus because of COVID anyway, if they can help. Yeah. So, I, so for the time being, I, I would be shelving that. Other than that, I would like to keep putting pressure on FRTA to respond 
to mm-hmm. the needs of, of people who um, have uh, need, who need access to transportation. Sure, sure. Um, well, um, one of the things that came up at a, a call that I was on with Mass Office on Disability, and I'm not sure that this is directly relative, but it made me think that there is a disability law center that's associated with with Mass Office on Disability. And um, I think if, um, you know, I think we should wait and see uh, what's happening with the mayor. Um, but it may be that, you know, it needs further uh, assistance from yes. another party to have some ability. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Well, I'll I'll be happy to um, look into that too, to see if they're available for that. I, I uh, Jenny, maybe you have a recollection of this. I don't have my notes in front of me, but um, when we talked to um, the Franklin Bar Association, wasn't that one of the uh, resources that they suggested to us? And looking for um, oh, because we were looking for an attorney who could, who might take this on the whole the the unsafe bus stop issue. That that's correct. That is correct. And um, uh, what's the name? Lively was going to be, I think. Um, um, Jennifer Lyme. I'm looking, I forget, remember what her first name was. Unfortunately, the pandemic got in the way of this. Mm. And um, it, it put a little kinks in the works. I, I have not spoken with them again. No, I haven't either. Right. Okay, but that they may be a, um, a, uh, Connection and um, I, c- I can touch base with Jennifer Lively about that. Yeah. Okay. Through the Franklin County Bar Association. Um, okay. Um, d- did oh. anyone else have anything else to say about the bus stop or? No. Okay. Lynn. Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt. That's okay. I wanted to go back when we were talking about the departments. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm concerned about the voting. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm concerned because people are not trusting the post office. Mm-hmm. I'm working as a greeter there. People are dropping off their ballots. No one wants to leave them at the post office. Mm. The entrance. I am stunned by the number of people that are doing that. And the city clerk is extraordinarily busy, but I'm looking at how people come in and they have to wait. And it's a little congested at the entrance. I think any of you who've come in can see that. I keep thinking if that's how people with um, a a, a mobility issue or some other type of issue want to enter, there's a whole check-in process they ended up would end up being a little bit more exposed. A lockbox on the outside that was not near steps would be a good idea. That would be something for Danny Letourneau, I think, or the clerk. Okay. Um, so it sounds like obviously that needs to be a priority. Good idea. Um, mm-hmm. Right. This is just for the primary. What I'm seeing. That there are cartons full of cartons and cartons of these coming in. And I think when I'm doing the greeting from 10 to 1, you know, you're stopping everybody and asking them, but there's a little bottleneck there. Plus, they have to come up that <clears throat> the ramp and wait six feet apart on the ramp. Mm-hmm. And I feel 
at the same time, I know that um, Clerk Scott is, this is just unbelievable what she needs to do mm. with three different ways of running an election with people that, and people are afraid to be poll workers or greeters. It's very difficult, but it still needs to be addressed. So just to help clarify for me, what do you think would be the best way to address it? Um, I don't know if people would feel comfortable with this, but they do not trust the, they absolutely don't trust the post office. I think a lockbox down at the bottom of the ramp. Mm -hmm. um, because if, if you were in a motorized wheelchair, I, I just don't know how that would be s sitting there waiting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not sure that they're, they'll, they'll be able to do that. <clears throat> they have a drop, a mail-in drop at the front door that they're enlarging. And mm -hmm. that's good if you don't have any difficulty with stairs. Mm -hmm the front entrance so it's just and I really will tell you honestly I don't want to be the person that's bringing it up with Kathy because I know what it's like right now it's incredible but it needs to be addressed uh, may I ask sure. something yes Lord. Uh, Ginny I haven't I haven't been down there and um, you're talking about people coming to the post office and physically bringing their um, ballots in. Is that right? Yes. Pe people are not bringing their, they are not mailing them. They're not putting them in the mailbox. They I are see. bringing them into the town hall personally. To oh, make I see. Okay. sure that they get there. And there can be you know, 75 people a day that are doing that. And that's just for the primary. Mm. So uh, the media coverage of this would make everyone think that they should not trust the post office. People mm. want to make sure that their ballot gets in there. But if you want to make sure your ballot get in there and you had a mobility issue, that's something to think about. So mm. who would have the authority to uh you know take that suggestion and make the drop box available the city clerk okay or or you could talk or danny who mm -hmm. talking to the clerk okay danny might be a good way to to go to go okay okay um Well, I'm uh, willing to contact her um, and, um, you know, invite her to the meeting as well. So it would kill two birds with one stone. Right. But I can see that that is going to be a problem. Okay. Right. Um, I'll try to, I'm on Monday. I'll try to write, I'll write her a note and sp I'll, I'll write a note and speak to Danny too, because that is something I just, there's early voting is happening. Early voting is happening the whole week of the August 22nd to the 30th. And that's going to be 10 to 3.30, but everyone's going to have to be checked in and, um, yeah. So mm. I'll, I'll I'll write a note to Danny today. I'll put that right down here. Okay. Lindsay, did you? Um. So just as a like FYI clarification, is that George Vandalender and his team will be the ones who probably do any modification to the building, um, which is why I think it's probably really important to hold George in at some point to have a conversation with you all because I think. Um, ensuring that his eyes and his lens is looking at it um, 
through this perspective would be helpful because he's usually the one in, you know, somebody says we got to enlarge the mail slot. Well, the clerk's not enlarging the mail slot. He's enlarging the mail slot. So I think or his team is. And so I think probably pulling him in um, at some point to help kind of uh, increase his awareness um, of those issues is probably going to be an important um, point. And I did just shoot Danny a quick email, though everybody should follow up with her um, mm -hmm. on this issue because I do think it's a really important one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else about um, that issue? Okay. Um, uh, building accessibility uh, and being part of the planning stage and uh, the the big item this month has been the library plans. Um, I'm sorry that Margo isn't here so I can um, heap praise on her. <laughs> she did a wonderful job at helping me read blueprints and um, and also Bob Williford has been extremely helpful. Um, just a, a, you know, trying to make a quick note. Um, basically, the way we sort of broke it up was I dealt with toilets <laughs> in the new building, and Margot dealt with um, things like uh, the stacks and, you know, general layout. Um, Bob was very helpful around the parking and site issues. Um, one of the obstacles was that I couldn't bring up the architect's plans on an iPad. Um, so I actually got some hard copies of the blueprints. And if anyone is interested, I have those here and um, you're happy to look at them. Um, I'm wondering why you got ended up with the crappy job. <laughs> oh, it, it wasn't crappy. I mean, I it, it was actually he's, very interesting. Um, he's joking on you. <laughs> I, I get the pun. I get the pun. <laughs> I don't know. I just, toilets were, are my thing, I guess. <laughs> um, and one of the issues, the, the big toilet issue, was um, we suddenly realized that there's a section of the library that is going to be um, open in the evening, so the rest of the library is closed off. And um, the bathrooms in that section, there was no unisex bathroom. It was just men and women. And the problem for that is if someone's in a wheelchair and have a companion who's the opposite sex that needs to help them, you know, you don't want somebody coming into the other bath to the bathroom who's a different sex and that you know there was an issue around gender issues so we're working on that um initially the architect you know had some odd suggestions <laughs> but um <laughs> uh margo um i guess gave him some ideas about uh, you know how to how to make that happen. So we're waiting to hear that, but that was one of the major things. Mm. And then also the toilets in the children's section will be low. You know they'll they'll be uh, scaled for children, which will be nice. Um, mm. Yeah. Um, so we continue to be uh, extremely. Uh, uh, appreciative that we're uh, part of this. Um, probably one of the big major issues um, that Bob has helped is helping with is that um, there's a patio downstairs on the first floor and there is no uh, accessible uh, exit. You know, it, to, to get off there, it's a set of stairs and they're, uh -huh. they're considering that area a area of, I guess it would be refuge to, you know, 
if you're stuck and there's a fire, you have to wait if you're in a wheelchair in that section um, until you're you're come and you're rescued. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> Whose uh, idea was that? <laughs> well, it, it was. It wasn't so much their idea. The issue was there isn't uh, where the patio is at this point in the plan. Th there is not enough room on the site to put a mm. ramp that would have to be incredibly long. Um, wow. So, you know, you're you're always constrained by different issues. Um, so that's, that's the, one of the big ones we're working on right now. So there's a lot of technical things. Um, um, I don't know, Bob, did you want to, uh, offer anything at all? He's muted. <laughs> Not sure whether you can hear me or not. I can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a big issue with the the back patio. Part of the problem is that there's not enough library staff to uh, staff that as an entrance to the building. So it's really only considered uh, a, an extension of the children's area, which is at that back end of the library. So the kids can go out and play. Um, have programs out on that patio. And it is also an emergency exit from the second floor. There's a stairway that comes down, exits onto the patio. And if you are able-bodied, then you cross the patio, go down another set of stairs to get to a way out of the, uh, away from the building. Um, the architect, um, said at the last building committee meeting that, well, they'd really thought of that patio as just a uh, refuge area for people who had mobility problems. So they would just wait there. And, you know, I had brought up the point that there really needs to be a firewall between the patio and the building. But then again, somebody mm -hmm. who's an architect on the building committee said, not true if there is a sprinkler system installed in the building. So you may be seeing a lot of smoke. You may be hearing all kinds of alarms going off. You may be seeing, seeing people rush away from the building, but you'll be fine. And <laughs> or, or, you, or you may choke to death on, on, the, uh, on the smoke coming out of the building. Absolutely. And I've made the point, too, in, in an email that I think uh, went to uh, Councillor DeSorger and to Councillor Mayo, that Fire is not the only thing that can happen that can cause you to want to evacuate a building. You know, we've we've seen active shooter situations. Would you like to be out on the other side of the glass curtain, unable to escape from the patio if somebody with a gun is inside the library? If there's something else, if there's a gas leak and everybody needs to get away from the building, sitting there on the patio is not going to be a solution. I don't think the Architectural Access Board will agree to not having an accessible means of egress from that patio. Mm -hmm. That's it, unless somebody has a question. Bob, that's where the, Bob, that's where the targets come in. Where the what comes in, sir? The sticker, the sticker targets. <laughs> All right. It's just my thick humor again. Yeah. It just seems to me that the, the word refuge is quite ill-used for that sort of area. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there is actually a different term that's called an area for assisted rescue, which mm. means it's a designated area that the emergency responders know to check, and they will come and find you there and carry you off. So it's still a danger area, but it's an area where they will expect you to go and for them to find you and, and uh, get you away from the building. 
So that's a much more appropriate term. No. So um, this just gives you a sampling of <laughs> many of the issues that we've been dealing with. But uh, again, um, I'm grateful that we are part of this process and getting to, um, you know, give our comments before, um, you know, in the early stages. Um, I guess everything's going to the, um, I think it's called the cost estimator um, shortly. So, uh, you know, decisions are made obviously based on, on what things cost. But uh, we're pushing hard. Uh, our two big things are access off the um, the deck and the unisex bathroom. Um, many of the other things uh, seem to be fairly in compliance. Um, yeah. So. Um, all right. Um, and as I mentioned, if anyone's interested in seeing the plans, let me know. And th they can be accessed online uh, if you have a, a, a computer that can can deal with architectural drawings. And we, uh, via what? Through the town uh, website? Um. That's a good question. I, I have the email from the architect. I could just send that to you. I would appreciate that. I, I would enjoy or I would I would be quite interested to see the plan. Yeah. OK, thank you. Sure. Um, all right. Um, so. Um, the next thing on the agenda is the COVID-19 information. Um, basically, I'm just bringing that up as a reminder from the course that I went to that any of the programs or plans that are being put in place by the town has to meet um, uh, Uh, ADA standards, and to also think about, um, you know, if they're putting out information, all different kinds of people. There's not just mobility issues. There's sight. There's hearing, um, and to make sure uh, those are covered. Yeah. Um, so they they mentioned obviously 911 is for first responders but also 211 is for um, uh, mass emergency management um, and uh, the mass office on disability has a uh, personal emergency preparedness program and we actually offered that, um, I guess it was about a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, uh, and had a lot of really great information. I can get that information to folks. And I'm also gonna remind um, you all, um, and especially Laura, um, that for the personal emergency program, they handed out, they were called go packs, and it was a backpack, and it was filled with um, different um, things like, um, you know, a crank radio, um, uh, water. Um, it was really, really a nice um, uh, package of things. Um, you know, a regular can opener. Um, so I'm happy to, I have them here at my home and I'm happy to give Laura one um, and anybody in at Elm Terrace who is disabled or feels like they would need something like that. Um, I have quite a few of the backpacks. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So, um, 
the Mass Office on Disability, on their website, they have the Personal Emergency Preparedness Program. And it has a list of, you know, like a checklist of all the things that you'd want to pack in your backpack so that if there was an emergency, you can grab it and go out the door. So you'd have your meds, you'd have doctor's names, you'd have uh, maybe, you know, important documents in there. Um, and that was the idea of the go pack. So um, uh, the, the whole issue with the COVID-19 information reminded me of that. And I wanted to just make sure people People knew about that again. Um, and as I said, anybody who wants one of the backpacks, let me know. I have I have them here at my house. Um, I would I would suggest um, one of our uh, resources here at uh, Elm Terrace, and I believe she. Um, she goes to other sites, but I'm not sure which one, um, is Jen Glover, who is uh, our Life Path uh, representative. And mm -hmm. she's the go-to person for Elm Terrace for anyone who um, needs food, has um, a problem with their um, not being able to take use their bathtub because of disability issues, whatever. She's the person that we are um, that is our contact person for all those kinds of first call for for help people. And um, she would be a good person to um, connect to in terms of um, the uh, getting backpacks out to Elm Terrace residents who are disabled and who would really, really benefit from something like that. Sure, I'd, I'd be happy to do that. So Jen Glover, okay. is your name at LifePath? Yeah, um, and I, I can email you her, her contact information. That would be great, that's good. And uh, I'd also appreciate it. I wanna distribute them and I can always use the room in my basement. So <laughs> all, good, all good things. <laughs> I'm always trying to move things out the door. <laughs> okay. Um, and the last thing on the open issues is the status of outdoor dining. Um, did, did I send everybody a copy of the handout that the Mass Office on Disability gave? It was really well done. Yeah. Um, if you want a copy of that, um, I'll be happy to send you the copy. Just let me know. I would, I would like that. Okay, Laura. How about you, Doug? Did you get that? Uh, I'm checking my email. It looks like I either didn't get it or um it it got lost in something but so please uh re uh, try it again okay thank you yeah as i said it was very well done um and um it's it's robin again i i, yep. I was busy typing and i missed the germ of what that email was about oh i'm sorry it's um outdoor dining at, and the mass office on disability put together a fact sheet um, with a checklist and information about how to set up outdoor dining. Oh, okay, great, thank you. So I, did, I didn't send that to you either? Um, I'll, make, I'll make sure I send it to you. Okay, I might, I might, I might have missed it. It yeah. looks like you sent it to everyone on August 1st, but that was a ways it would go and things yeah. happen. Right. Um, and then the only other thing about the outdoor dining is um, I saw an email from Cynthia. I was hoping she'd be able to come to the meeting today. Um, she had an issue 
with the setup at the co-op in the alleyway. Um, I went down and looked at it. The dining area looks great. Um, I guess the issue was they put up these metal gates and then it was hard for people at the Weldon Center. You know, it was blocked off and they would have to go around on the other street, which is really quite a mess. The sidewalks are a mess there. Um, so has anyone been, has anyone used the, the dining area at the co-op? I have not. Mm -hmm. Neither have I. Okay. I just, I wasn't sure what the, um, uh, what the purpose of the metal gates were. Um, but they, you know, they, they can be drawn across the alleyway on both ends, right on Main Street and then on the, the end where the parking lot is. My guess is, it, I, my guess is to that uh, uh, it used to be an alleyway where people traversed mm -hmm. uh, uh, quite frequently. Uh, yeah. My wife and I uh, used that quite frequently, uh, you know, when we went for our walks mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it was used for loading and uh, mm -hmm. Uh, trucks sometimes used it to back up and mm -hmm. and unload their their things their their produce as well but for the most part they have used that that uh the back where they it's easier to uh but if there's more than one truck they, they i've seen them back up uh to where the dining were uh was uh mm -hmm. but not when the dining thing was set up, mm. you know, during the day that that uh, or during the time of before, before COVID, they would back up. Maybe uh, they would have one truck waiting and one one unloading. So, but I used it as a as a means to just to cut the corner uh, to use that draw to back to use that. Uh, crummy driveway, as you say, uh, right. to uh, get to uh, Wall Street. Right. So I know that in the email that um, Cynthia sent me, she had pictures of it and she was sending it to the mayor's office. So um, I haven't heard anything uh, back about that. Um, but I, I do want to, I'm going to touch base with the co-op and see when they're drawing those gates across. Um, Hi, this is, this is Lindsay, sorry. Just when you started to talk about this, I my computer shut down and I'm back. <laughs> um, we, we did receive Cynthia's email. Um, MJ and I went out there and measured Sears Ave. Um, and the narrowest portion, which is near that dinosaur electrical box, was over 48 inches wide. Mm -hmm. And the part on Main Street um, that she re referenced about the um, stanchions um, mm -hmm. was wider than 36 inches, mm -hmm. um, which is what they say the minimum should be. So I wasn't quite sure what she was seeing there. Um, the co-op is trying to leave them open during the co-op hours, though because of staffing issues, they can't always, um, but it is an insurance reason, which is why it's blocked off. Uh, um, okay. So, um, yeah, I don't know how they get, I don't know how you could get around an insurance issue um, mm -hmm. for overnight, um, leaving that open. Mm -hmm. um, but each table, I believe, or almost all of the tables are, um, that they have along the side there are ADA. Um, yeah, I, I went. provide enough mm -hmm. to turn around. Yeah, I, I went and did a, a roll through <laughs> and uh, it was very easy to, uh, um, uh, you know, to manage through there. 
Um, mm -hmm. I think I think the main issue with Cynthia was the gates. So, mm -hmm. as you said, that I mean that clarifies it. So they're using the gates to um, uh, for insurance purposes in the evening. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well. Um, uh, and I do believe it's temporary at this yeah. point. So. Okay. Unfortunately. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, just um, two other quick things under new business. Um, I have a request from, um, I guess it's Eric Tuick. Um, the city of Greenfield is partnering with the Franklin Regional Council of Governments to prepare a municipal vulnerability preparedness plan. Um, so I have a survey that I need to complete uh, because they want the input from the disability com community. Um, but it's covering a number of different things. Um, has anybody seen the, it's called the MVP preparedness program? Uh, I believe I have. Okay. Yes, I know I have. I was on that. But that's very good that Eric's reaching out. Yeah, I got the packet. Um, I just wanted to get input from any of you um, about your thoughts on emergency preparedness. I mean, it it's they've identified had the top priority hazards in Greenfield as flooding, hurricanes, severe winds, extreme temperature, and landslides. Um, so, so Go ahead. I have I have a do you want me to I'm kind of interrupting but do you want me to give a little input on that because it's coming back to my brain please I yeah. actually I was on this committee for a year and now I'm remembering all of it mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. what I wanted to say was they identified all of the major issues that we'd had but oh, as far as big hazards that happen to the town but as we've said recently we're not just in touch with everyone we don't know everyone and their issues and where they are i think the smart um the uh smart 911 is a way that uh people can register so that the town knows who is where, but not everyone is aware of, of that smart 911. Yeah. So there's, it's great that he's reaching out and how we're gonna make that next leap, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but if there were something to happen and we listed all the natural hazards and the fire department and <clears throat> the police department, everybody knows where they're going to go, but have we identified all of the people and where they are? I, I, they, they certainly know that they know that Elm Terrace, I pointed out our neighborhood in particular, that we have a lot of seniors, et cetera, all of whom would not identify themselves as being disabled, but many might need help. But how we get to everybody, I, I don't know, but it was a, it was a year long process and they extended the review period due to the pandemic for, mm -hmm. for, for the input. That's, that's all I have to say. Right. And, and that's what it said in the letter to me that they were supposed to have a public hearing uh, to get input from the community, but it had to be put on hold. Um, so they're doing it by survey. So I'm asking all of you to just put your hats on. And if there's anything you can think of, um, around emergency preparedness for folks with disabilities, uh, let me know so I can complete this survey. 
Um, ideally, I'd like to be able to get back to them in a month or so. But I have the packet here and I'll, I'll await any input from folks. Excuse me, Lynn, do you know who else they sent the survey to? I mean, like, yeah, is, who else is in the area have they sent the survey to? Do you know? Um, I don't. Um, it's just addressed to Dear Greenfield Community Member. <laughs> How about, Ginny, would you happen to know who's on the mailing list? No, I, I don't know who's on the mailing list. I know they did a year's worth of research identifying this. Then they had a night where they were presenting it to people. Not many people showed up that evening. Mm -hmm. It is just not something that people think about actually until it happens. Right. Like who would be thinking about this until it happens? Yeah. And then then we see the underbelly of all, all the issues that you have. So, so, no, I don't know who or how, you know, who got on any mailing list. There was something in the paper about the whole project. But um, I think it's very good that they're reaching out to us, and I think we'll all have to put on our thinking caps to see what we can do to make sure that the left hand knows what the right's doing. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's a good question, and um, I have I, I get the recorder and can get back issues. So maybe I'll I'll see, um, you know, check the article and see if they talk anything about that mm -hmm. about who's involved. And okay. I'll try to get I, I will try to get anything that I have distributed also. Okay. Or to you, to you all. I'll find what I have and get it out. Okay. Okay, and then uh, the last thing under new business is um, I just wanted to give you a quick report on the um, statewide Commission on Disability and ADA coordinator call that took place on July 20th with the Mass Office on Disability. And um, it was it was a really uh, informative, it was a good talk. Um, I'm gonna send you all the links so you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, you can, if you're interested, you can watch it on YouTube. I guess M M O D has a YouTube channel. Um, but they talked about um, things like the Disability Law Center, um, and people had submitted questions. So like one of the main ones was, what if I uh, am forced to go back to work, but I have an underlying condition and I don't want to be exposed? What are my rights? Um, so someone from the Disability Law Center um, talked about that, addressed that issue. Um, so that was just an example of it. Um, they um, uh, had a had a number of things like the outdoor dining. That was the fact sheet that they talked about that. Um, so there was a lot of good information, and it was just um, an opportunity to um, kind of really look at a lot of the things that they're doing around based on COVID nineteen. So they wanted to update the, the community and, and get the information out there. So I'm going to send you uh, the email from Jeff Dugan at MOD, and uh, it'll have a number of links. So anything you're interested that looks interesting to you, feel free to, to follow up on. And that's it for new business. Does anyone else have any new business or? something Lynn this is Lindsay yep I have I have two quick updates um, already people have gotten back to me Marlo says Arch Street is going great but they have not yet decided how they're doing the railings due to the narrowness 
Mm. So, okay. Um, I so just so you all know, he's they're working on it, but they're not they don't have a solution yet. Okay. Um, and Danny Letourneau got back to me regarding the mail drop box. It will be placed um, at the accessible entrance to town hall. Oh, um, so it will wow. not be placed up the steps. Oh, that's wonderful. I wrote while we were talking too. I'm delighted. <laughs> <laughs> I said, hopefully this stops her from getting a few more emails from this committee because she responded <laughs> so quickly to me. Um, so just as a heads up on those two. And then um, also on your um, ADA coordinator, on the, I was on the ADA coordinator call um, that Lynn has been talking about. I thought the two pieces that were highlighted that I haven't seen, that I, I thought were important, so I passed on the mayor's office. Um, one was about the denial of entry into spaces for people who can't wear masks due to a disability. Um, right. And um, they noted that you can't exclude someone from a public space for not wearing a mask, um, and that they aren't required to provide documentation. Um, and they, so you can't really exclude them unless it can be proved that you pose a direct threat. Um, so only in a place where social distancing is not possible. And they had said in most office or retail settings, social distancing is possible. It is possible to be more than six feet from the person. So mm -hmm. um, I just thought that was kind of a, an important point, especially as we all try to navigate this weird new world we live in. Yeah. Um, and then the other piece was on the local business entry limits. And I think Ginny spoke to this briefly about City Hall and the ways in which you wind up with long lines outside. Um, and they, they do recommend um, sheltered locations with chairs or appointment times. Um, and then they also recommend people calling ahead to make sure that, you know, they, that the manager or whoever can understand and accommodate whatever might happen. Someone was mm -hmm. referring to barber sh barber shops, especially who are having lots of limits, um, and yeah. so that they were suggesting that as an option. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. So all that information, as I said, it's available. Um, if you wanted to listen to it, but also I'm going to send you the link with some of the important issues. Um, and uh, finally, I just under announcements, I want to announce with flair, I saw in the newspaper today, the lift <laughs> installed at the cinema. I Yay. am. You know, I can't believe we've, we're now in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> I'm I'm iffy about going to the cinema, but I thought I've got to check out the lift. I mean, this has been seven years in the making. So I wow. almost feel like we should have had a, you know, a ribbon cutting or a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I saw it in the paper today, so. I, I'm I'm definitely gonna check it out. I'm not sure I'm gonna go spend any time at the cinema. We'll see, but uh, I'll go buy I'm some. I'm also happy to send people some photos. Yeah. I uh, have been by doing inspections, so I've got photos. Great, great. Thank you. Yeah, I was actually thinking it would have been nice for some of us to be there and have our picture taken, <laughs> but anyway. Um, so that was that was just a, a little silver lining nugget this morning to, to see that in the newspaper. Anyway, any other announcements? Nope. Okay. In that case, uh, our next meeting is on September 10th. Um, I will not be here. I'll be away. So I need to speak with someone who can run the meeting or have the meeting. Um, um, I know that uh, Cynthia is uh, is our alternate chair, but she doesn't seem to be able to to make the meeting. So um, I'm happy to try that as mm -hmm. as long as we have. So um, Laura would probably need to get sworn in and. Then if we had 
Laura, as long as we have Laura and Doug and then we have three, mm -hmm. right? And Margo. And, and Margo would be back. That would be good. Unless I break another leg. Oh, I know. D Doug, I'm so sorry. If you need anything, let me know, please. Uh, I, I on, on top of breaking my leg, I, I, I fell out of bed face first and, and uh, was uh, unbeknownst to me, I was bleeding across the floor, uh, 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 a deep red that I had never seen for myself. I mean, I've seen cuts and things of that nature, but never, never bleeding like this. And Gosh. my wife said to me, what's that on the floor? And she had no idea. She said, no, that looks like blood. Mm. Oh, and that's after I moved it, you know, uh, you know, I, I moved my bedroom down to the down to the first floor. And that's after I did that. I just I, I don't know what happened. I, lo just, I lost balance or whatever. And down I went. Wow. Where where did where is your leg broken? It, it, well, like, it's it's oh. on the outer part of the foot, so uh -huh. it, it, the ankle is already fused, but yeah. it it couldn't have hurt. It, it couldn't have been a, a worse place, uh, you know, to because my uh, my ankle is already fused, and in multiple areas uh, on that foot. And it happened. Uh, I I broke bones on the outside of the 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 foot. I'm not sure what the what the bone is called, but that um, the, um, they don't they don't really do any surgery for that. Right, right. Well, they 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 tape it up, uh, and they tell you you know uh, be careful. They get they send me to PT. Um, and all that good kind of stuff, uh, but my PT, my PT person's been on vacation for a week and a half, so they didn't send anybody else. Mm. So sure. maybe sure. I might ask her for tips to, as to how to not not to slide out of bed and <laughs> and and fall flat on my face. Sounds like you need side rails on your bed. <laughs> uh, somebody has said that. Somebody <laughs> suggested that. I said. I, I don't think I, I'm not going that far, okay. not quite yet. I, I may need a rope at the top of the, you know, you know, so I can pull myself up. Uh huh. Uh, uh but um, you know, I don't know if I want to go by the rail yet. Yeah, yeah, I know. Is uh, um, but anyway, different equipment uh is a reflection of different milestones so that's, I, that's for sure we're just getting yeah. down the stairs you know moving moving what we can you know i just took the mattress and threw it down the stairs <laughs> and and dragged it as much as i could down uh you know to to the room where we had but mm -hmm. that's pretty much the way that we moved is we took all the little things put it in bags and then and including clothes and just you know, threw that down the stairs, threw the mattress down the stairs, and clean box springs. But there's uh, there's a few things that we can't throw down the stairs. But you know, we'll we'll have to get uh, more people to that are more able body than I am that to uh, to get those pieces down. But um, as as long as I have a computer to work with, uh, I'm fine. Yeah, jeez. All right. Well, uh, best healing, you know, hope, hope things get better quickly. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to adjourn the meeting. Um, and uh, I'll make that motion. Second. All right. Doug, stay safe. Everybody stay safe. I